India is a land of many perennial rivers flowing with their own musical rhythm. The cultural heritage of India is deeply interwoven with these rivers, be it matters of increasing agricultural production or uplifting the socio-economic status of the inhabitants. We have always looked towards these rivers. Knowing fully well that India's food grain production could only be enhanced through expansion of irrigation, a large number of river valley projects were completed to divert the river water towards parched lands. Aptly described as temples of modern India, these projects have been one of our laudable achievements. These harbingers of hopes have paid rich dividends too. Although agricultural production increased beyond our expectations, yet our experiences at the farm level have not been unblemished. After initial increase in productivity, it could not be sustained for long. A major setback was development of water logging and soil salinity. Due to these problems, large tracts and several irrigation commands went out of production. The rise in the water table is an inevitable consequence of canal irrigation. Although the problem is experienced both in the old as well as the new canal commands, of late a rise in the water table at the rate of one meter per annum in the recently completed phase one of the Indira Gandhi Neher Pariyojana has been worrisome to all concerned. The rise in the water table could be attributed to excessive seepage from the canal network, poor on-farm water management and introduction of high water requiring crops in hostile environments unsuited to these crops. Besides, inadequate drainage and improper maintenance of the drainage network played a catalytic role in accentuating the problem. Development activities, a prescription for the national progress added a new dimension to drainage congestion. Acquisition of wetlands and natural depressions for housing and industrial expansion also contributed to the expansion of the problem. To cite an example of ever-increasing dimensions, the areas under water logging and salinity expanded on an average of 3,000 hectares per annum during the last 16 years in the Tunga Bhadra command of Karnataka state. Soil salinization is an inevitable consequence of water logging. It appears soon after water logging invades the land. As a result, large stretches of barren land with white salt efflorescence are seen in many irrigation projects. Even partial degradation adversely affects the productivity of the cultivated lands. Soil salinization, which initially appears in patches, expands to engulf the whole area within a short span. As soon as the cultivation on these lands becomes financially unviable, lands are taken away from the plough. Such lands have been aptly described as wet deserts. It is a paradox that while dry deserts formed naturally, wet deserts developed because of man's interference with nature. In such a fast developing scenario, the Central Soil Salinity Research Institute at Karnal was established. The main issue that agitated the scientific community was could we bring the farmers affected by these problems back into the rural mainstream so that their faces could glow once again with happiness? Without doubt, it was a challenging and colossal task. Within five to six years of its existence, the Institute developed a cost-effective package to reclaim alkali lands. With the adoption of this package, around 1.2 million hectares of alkali lands could be reclaimed in the states of Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. It contributed nearly 8 to 9 million tons of food grains to the national kitty. Permanent settlement practices adopted by a few nomadic tribes and changes in the lifestyle of farmers adopting land reclamation highlighted the socio-economic aspect of this program. After this resounding success, concerted efforts were initiated in 1979 to develop a technology that would turn wet deserts into lush green fields. A small beginning was made by getting on lease a piece of degraded land from the village panchayat in Sampla. 
This village is located on the Delhi Firozpur National Highway No. 10. The Panchayat members happily parted with this piece of land as none of the members had seen a crop growing on these lands during their lifetime. The only greenery they had ever seen was some salt-tolerant grasses and acacia that might appear during the monsoon season. These fields remained barren for most of the year and were eyesores for those passing through the highway. In-house discussions began amongst the scientists to devise a viable plan to reclaim this land. Alternate drainage plans were drawn and their pros and cons discussed. Since this area experienced monsoon rains and was like a micro-depression, provision of surface drainage was considered of utmost importance. It was realized that topography of the area might pose several problems. Fortunately, a shallow drain with a pumping station existed nearby. This facilitated the disposal of drainage water in the Dulheda distributary. However, everyone realized that surface drainage alone would not suffice. Control of the groundwater table, which fluctuated from soil surface during the monsoon to around 1.5 meters during summer months, could be a major hurdle in our plans to reclaim these lands. Two alternate options were available to control the water table at optimum depth. One was to opt for a horizontal pipe drainage system, while the other was vertical drainage a consensus emerged in favor of the horizontal drainage system. To successfully implement this technology, surveys were commenced. A humble beginning was made by opening deep open drains to control the water table. Although spectacular results are not claimed, yet good crops of pearl millet and wheat could be grown. Farmers who happened to pass through a public way within the farmland were amazed to see the crops growing on barren lands. Scientifically, too, it was a satisfying experience. It helped to build up confidence in this technology. Considering operation and maintenance problems, expenses involved in operation, and difficulties in mechanization of agricultural operations, it was decided to construct pipe drainage systems. In all subsequent installations, PVC pipes and synthetic filters were used. The next essential step was to leach down the salts. This process, known as leaching, requires that water be stored on the land surface. For reclaiming a 60 cm deep soil layer, enough to grow most arable crops, 30 cm of water needs to be passed through the root zone. Once the salts were leached, salt-resistant crops and their varieties were grown during the initial few years of reclamation. The next 15 to 20 years were the years of rapid developments and achievements. Cotton, pearl millet, sorghum, wheat, barley, mustard and rice crops could be grown successfully in the reclaimed fields. The yield from the reclaimed lands at par with normal fields can be obtained within three years the white, barren lands turn to lush, green fields. With this success under its belt, the Institute planned to propagate these technologies in other irrigation commands with the support of other field organizations. The collaboration between Haryana Land Reclamation and Development Corporation Chandigarh and Water and Land Management Institute Anand in Gujarat flourished. Twelve demonstration plots were laid to demonstrate the drainage technology right on the farmer's field. The powerful technology was demonstrated to the farmers on their own fields. With extensive testing and verification under diverse agroclimatic conditions, the scientists gained confidence. They released guidelines to design a subsurface drainage system and prepared a package of practices to reclaim waterlogged saline lands. Efforts were also initiated to develop appropriate construction techniques. The effectiveness of a drainage system depends largely upon how effectively the system has been constructed. In order to determine a cost-effective technology, a number of studies have been conducted in the country. First of all, a drainage system was laid out at Sampla. In this system, pipes were laid as well as drains were dug using manual labor. 
in the rajat project in rajasthan the drainage system was constructed fully mechanically using imported machinery later on government of haryana imported two such machine and laid out drainage system at gohana and kalayat around 2000 hectare of agriculture land but put under subsurface drainage using fully mechanical means in the indo dutch network project we utilized a new technology which we call a hybrid technology in this technology drains are dug using locally available machine while the pipes are laid using manual labor according to dr gupta in the indian context hybrid technology seems more reasonable and cost effective considering its potential to generate rural employment the estimated expenditure on implementing the package varies from 20000 rupees to 35000 rupees per hectare the investments made could be recovered within 3 years of installation if the escalation in land value is taken into account then the whole investment is recovered through this escalation right in the first year itself the government of india provides subsidy on land drainage as such farmers share the cost of the system could be less to that extent besides several direct benefits this technology has immensely benefited and enhanced the socio-economic status of the farmers opting for land reclamation the net income of both the farming and non-farming rural habitants has increased owing to increased crop productivity increased cropping intensity and enhanced opportunities for employment within the village environment drainage has been instrumental in bringing down the incidences of migration from villages to nucleus city centers women farmers also participated actively in land reclamation programs by initiating land reclamation activities through self help groups a beginning was made for women empowerment मैं अपने हृदय के दिल से कहती हूँ कि मैंने करके देख रखी है ये प्रोजेक्ट ने हमारे साठ प्रतिशत फायदा किया है कुछ जमीन हमारी रह भी रही है उसमें नहीं है जो पाइप दब रहे हैं उसमें बहुत कुछ सुधार आ गया है अब हमें भूस भी हमारे पास बहुत अच्छा होता है नाज भी उसी एकड़ में तीन तीन चार चार बार हो जाकर देखिए उसी एकड़ में तीस तीस मण अनाज पैदा लेते हैं हम बहुत सुधार आ गया है Saline drainage effluent is an essential byproduct of a subsurface drainage system. At times, its disposal poses several insurmountable problems. Several ways and means to dispose of or even reuse it for crop production were explored and made a part of the technology. A part of the drainage effluent must be drained to maintain salt balance. It could be accomplished through existing natural or artificially constructed drainage systems a larger fraction of it could be reused for crop production within the drainage area cyclic use of canal and drainage water is one approach drainage effluent could also be conveniently and profitably used to irrigate crops by mixing it with canal water using these techniques several crops such as wheat mustard and barley have been successfully grown In the absence of an appropriate natural drainage system the drainage effluent could be disposed of through evaporation tanks the economic utility of these tanks would be substantially enhanced if brackish water fish culture is also practiced in these tanks the central soil salinity research institute utilized all strategies in its armory to extend this technology to extension officers and field personnel In order to increase our reach a large number of training programs have been organized to directly address the farming community farmer fairs have been organized and field visits to drainage sites have been arranged popular literature in english hindi and other regional languages has been published today we are equipped with a technology that would provide a facelift to the wet saline deserts application of technology that transformed the white sheets of salts to lush green fields is a unique success story it is more than evident through the rejoicing families of the farmers who had nothing but a desolate look on their faces before 
while journeying through this path of success, one would encounter a cool breeze blowing from green fields. 